The purpose of this video is to give you basic information on and how to do citations. Have you ever been reading a book or a journal article and come across something like this at the end of a sentence? Or maybe something like this at the end of a sentence? Or maybe at the end of a book or an article, you've seen a reference list that has entries entered in this style. Both of these things are part of a system called academic citation. Put simply, a citation is an indication that the idea, quotation, or fact found in what you're reading comes from another source, and it lets the reader know this as well as giving them a roadmap how to find that other source. A broad range of things can be cited, from news reports to government documents and even non-written sources like music. Generally though, citations refer to academic material. Academic material is distinct from other material you might cite for three main reasons. First, it's written by academics and universities. Second, it is peer-reviewed prior to its publishing by other academics to ensure its quality. And finally, it engages with previous research to move collective knowledge and a discipline forward. This is part of the reason we cite in academia. It shows that we're reading and responding to previous work done on the subject. There are two main sources of academic literature. These are books that are published by university presses and articles that are published in academic journals. When you write papers in university, you need to cite sources. First and foremost, because this is required by the university policy on academic integrity. Failure to properly cite when quoting or paraphrasing someone else's work is plagiarism, and doing that will result in academic penalties. It's important to note that university policies on academic misconduct place the responsibility on you to know what plagiarism is and that it is against the rules. This might have you feeling a little nervous, so let me just say that a good rule to follow about citations is that when you are in doubt about whether you should cite something, cite it. Being overly cautious about citations won't result in any serious problems, but not citing when you should very well may. The University Library also has very helpful online guides that go into great detail on citations. It's well worth your time to take a look at these. To get you started, here are the basics. There are two main things that you should cite. Ideas that are not your own and facts that are not commonly known. For example, if you are writing a paper on the development of healthcare in Canada and you used an idea you found about the unique nature of Canadian conservatism being more communally inclined, you should cite this idea if you're either directly quoting it or paraphrasing it. You're doing this because you didn't come up with this idea, but you're using the idea in your paper to build an argument. The other case where you should cite something is when you're referring to a fact that is not commonly known. If you were writing in a paper that Canada's Confederation was in 1867, you wouldn't need to cite this because this is a commonly known fact. But if you were referring to a little known fact, like after the Charlottetown Conference in 1864, maritime press suggested that their delegates had been outwitted through a combination of smooth talking and fancy champagne, now that's something you might need to cite. You might be thinking, why are citations a thing? Why do I have to go to all of this trouble? Well, beyond university policy, there are three main reasons. Citations are a way of showing your reader that what you are writing is trustworthy. It gives readers an opportunity to verify what you are saying. It also helps to draw a boundary between the thoughts and works of yours and the thoughts and works of other people in the paper that you're writing. Properly attributing your sources also demonstrates that you have looked at what others have written on a topic and are drawing on other work to support your arguments. It shows that you are engaging with the larger scholarly conversation about a topic. Think of citations as the practical machinery behind how this conversation occurs. It's how collective knowledge builds and spreads in academia. While there are many different types of citation styles, in the social sciences we generally use the best style, Chicago author date. This particular style was developed at the University of Chicago at the turn of the 20th century, but has undergone many changes since then. Here are the basics. There are two parts to Chicago author date, the way you do in-text citations, which means how you cite things in the body of your writing, and the way you do your reference list, which is at the end of your paper where you list the full details of the things that you cited in text. For in-text citations, after you finish a sentence that either directly quotes or paraphrases something in another work, you put the author's name followed by the year it was published in brackets and then the period. If there is more than one author, list last names separated with commas and an and for the last. If there are more than four authors in the work, put the last name of the first author and et al after. This is a little Latin phrase which means and others. 
When referring to a specific part or a direct quotation present in another work, you follow the year with a comma and then add in the page number. For the reference list, you list the name of the authors, followed by the year of publishing, titles of the work, and information on where it was published. The specific way you do this depends on the source itself. I'll cover the two main sources you'll use, books and journal articles. For both, you start with the last name of the author, followed by a comma, and then the first name of the author. If there is more than one author, you follow their names first name, then last name. After a period, put the date it was published. For a book, list its title in italics, followed by a period. Then place where it was published, followed by the name of the publisher. For a journal article, list the title of the article in quotations with a period before the end quote. List the name of the journal in italics, followed by the journal volume number, and then the issue number. All of this information, like volume, issue, date published, is normally located at the beginning of journal articles, especially when you are searching for these online. There is another variation on the Chicago citation style that you might run into called Notes Bibliography. Instead of putting citation information directly in the text and author date style, it uses superscripted numbers that proceed sequentially with accompanying details and footnotes at the bottom of the page. Just as an author date, each citation is fully detailed at the end of the work in a bibliography, with the only major difference being in that case that the publishing year is put at the end of the entry instead of after the author name. For the full style guide on how to cite sources beyond books and journal articles using either variant of the Chicago style, please go to this link.